this first Sunday of uh, 2020. I want to talk to you from the subject this morning, beginning, your beginning with God. Amen. Beginning, your beginning with God. Thank you, ushers. Beginning, your beginning with God. <clears throat> Uh, my beloved, today we have the same uh, opportunity. Everybody in here has the same opportunity oh, okay. today. We have the opportunity to begin life anew with God. Uh, yesterday is gone. Uh, all we have right now is today. And tomorrow may not come. And so everybody has the opportunity to begin fresh uh, with God today. In the beginning uh, was the first day. Uh, we are now uh, at the beginning of a brand new year. We are experiencing uh, something that we've never seen before and we will never see again. Uh, but my beloved God is here today, uh, just like he was in the beginning, Isaiah right. 65 and 24. Now, the beginning was in the will and in the power of the eternal God. That's when the beginning was. Now, in this message, because there are always some folks that want to know when was the beginning. I'm going to give you that today. It's not something that's unknowable. You can know when the beginning was. And so uh, 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 the, the beginning was already in the will and in the power of the, of the eternal God. It was the beginning of all things. Now, God never starts uh, anything before it's finished. Hmm? He never starts anything before he's finished. Why? Because he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. Amen? Uh, he knows the end of all things before the beginning. Our text tells us that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, and his name, the very name. Yeah. Uh, you hear from uh, talking about, oh God. Yeah. Yeah, you've heard folks do that, haven't you? Well, his very name uh, uh, means the beginning. Uh, the name uh, Elohim. Elohim means the beginning. In the beginning. So when we talk about oh, we're talking about the beginning. Amen. When you cry out to God, you cry out about the beginning. Amen. And so his name uh, means God himself. That's what Elohim means. God himself. Or the unity of the God here. Hmm? Uh, or better yet, the triune God. Some folks get the, get the trinity mixed up. Uh, they can't find Trinity in the Bible, so they get all confused and mixed up and get led astray. But he is the triune God, amen? And we see the care of God. Uh, I, I, we hear all the time, and you can try to tell a person until they're crazy in the head that God is love. But if they don't know what love is and have never experienced love, they don't really know what you're talking about. That's right. And many times they don't want to hear what you're talking about because to them it just sounds good. But I'm here to tell you that uh, God really is a God of love, amen? And we can see the care of God in the person of the Holy Ghost, amen? Because the scripture says that in the beginning God, but then the scripture also tells us uh, that uh, the condition of the earth, but then the, spirit, the, the Bible tells us and the spirit of God moves. That's the love of God. That's the caring of God. That God did something. Can I preach in here? Amen. And so uh, it says here, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. God created the universe and everything in it. For what, Pastor? For his pleasure. For his purpose. That's what he created it for. He didn't create it for you to grow along. That's extra. Huh? He created all of it for his own pleasure. Amen. He created the universe for his glory. When you look outside at night and uh, you look up in the, in, the, in, the, in the sky and see all of the stars and see the constellation, God did all of that for his glory. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and not only that, well, let me, let me help you out here. Isaiah 38 and 7, I'm uh, sorry, Job 38 and 7, Isaiah 43, 7 through 10. Now, God created the universe to reveal some things about him. You want to know, anybody in here want 
want to know anything about God, look at the universe. All right. All right. The universe displays his glory. The universe says who he is. The problem is that when we look at the universe, we're looking at something that the textbook said. We're looking at something that the teacher said in class. Help me out in here. But, but, but uh, uh, the universe reveals uh, things about God. Romans 1 and 20, Acts 14 and 17, Hebrews 11 and uh, 3, and uh, Psalms uh, 19 and 1, and Psalms uh, 97 and 6. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, um, uh, 19 and 20, and also put a circle on Ephesians 2 and, and 1, and also Colossians 2 and 13. The universe reveals God's glory. It reveals who God is. Uh, when you look at the universe, you see some things that man uh, I, I can't even touch. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why he's trying to get to the moon and, and trying to get past the moon. All, right. All of that God created for his glory. I had a conversation this week about global warming. Okay, that's a whole nother subject for another day. Uh, so God created the heavens and the earth to have fellowship. God was interested in, he's still interested in fellowship. He created all of that to have fellowship with him. Come on here. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah 29, 22, Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, St. John 10 and 10, and Philippians 3, uh, 13 and 14. The heavens uh, are the three visible heavens in the word of God. We always hear about the third heaven. Mm -hmm. Huh? And so uh, the heavens that we are talking about, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the heavens that are visible in the word of God. Jeremiah 15 and 3, Isaiah 13, 10, and Psalms 11 and 4. So that, that deals with the three heavens. Amen? Now, the text here, uh, and then, then, then God did something else in creation. He gave man a humanity free will. I'm so glad that I, we serve a God that does not uh, put a gun to your head. We serve a God that does not uh, uh, chain you up and handcuff you uh, in order to serve him. So we, we, God created us and gave us a free will to be able to accept or reject him. Our text is the doorway to God. You want to get to God? Start, you, 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 oh, you, you're going to start a Bible reading plan in, in 2020? Start with Genesis 1 and 1. It is the doorway to God. Don't jump right in the middle of something and don't know how it all got started. Yeah. <laughs> Start with God so you can better understand Him. Amen? And so the Bible, or the Word of God, Genesis, is the gateway uh, to God. Hebrews 11 and 6. Uh, and not only that, watch this. When God created the heavens and the earth, He delighted in doing so. It made Him so happy to create the heavens and earth. Isaiah 45 and 18 and Jeremiah uh, I'm sorry, Revelation 4 and 11. We'll look at that. Now, the text tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. The earth is the hometown of humanity. It's your hometown. Huh? You're in your hometown right now. Uh, it is the hometown of humanity or, or of the creature that was created by God. That's what the earth is. Amen? Uh, so you'll find that in Isaiah 45, 18, Jeremiah 4, and, and 23. Now, the Spirit of God, the Bible says, moved upon the face of the waters to make a way for mankind to enter the kingdom of God. God had to do some things. He dispatched his spirit and said, go down there and move. Go down there and make room for what I'm about to create. Go down there and make room for humanity that I'm getting ready to create. And so when we understand the work of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moved on the face of the waters to make a way for mankind to enter into the kingdom of God or what we call heaven, amen, based on what? My faith in Jesus Christ. Not on how much work I do. Not on who I think I am. Not on how much money I have. Amen. But according to my faith, amen, in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. John 3 and 5, uh, John 1, 1 through 3, and also Colossians 1 and 16 and Hebrews 1 and 2. Now, I must rush on. Now, there are many people who will not believe in God because they do not I have enough faith simply to believe. The majority of people that I know, the majority of the people that you know yeah. that are not saved, they are not saved because they don't have the faith to believe. Hmm? Yeah. That, that, that's, that's a real problem. And, and it's a simple thing. They need to know when was the beginning. Now, if you pass it, you tell me that I might believe. Uh, all right. 
If you just tell me, nobody, no, I've been to church, been to church all my life. Nobody been able to tell me when the beginning is. So if, if I find that out, then I will believe that there's a God and I'll accept him. Well, today is your day. The answer to when the beginning was, the 90th Psalm, verse number 2, Isaiah 65, 18, Jeremiah 10, and 16. Hebrews uh, 1 and uh, 10 and 13. Revelation 13, 18. Ephesians 1 and 4. That's just a few. Now, so we must learn uh, uh, to allow God to be bigger than the last movement of your life. God is bigger than that. If God created everything, if God was in the beginning, he's bigger than the last thing you did in life. Yeah. A lot of us think that the last thing we did in life was the greatest thing in the world. Uh -huh. And a lot of us are living on the last uh, thing, the big thing that we think we did in life. But if we learn how to understand that, uh, that God is bigger than the last moment of your life, uh, then we will have and we can have the new beginning. I'm looking at young people in here today, and I want them to understand that God has included and does include you uh, in uh, a new beginning. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. Uh -huh. Huh? Uh, I, I, you can become brand new. Amen. And I, I like that about God. Now, if we can stop uh, before remembering all the things that we endured last year yeah. and think about how uh, we are right now. You ever think about that? Think about all the things we endured last year. Mm -hmm. But God built a joke on the moments to roll on a little while and you're here right now. Uh, and think about what God has already done for us, even right now. Right here in this very moment, God is greater than anything that we can imagine or think. I, I, I'm confused when I hear a lot of people talk about how boring God is. Uh, that tells me one thing. You don't know him. Uh, if you really knew him, you would know that God is full of so much excitement until there's not enough of you or me to contain all of his excitement. Amen. And so as we begin this new year, uh, I know people make resolutions. Yeah. But can I tell you that uh, uh, about the middle of February, it's when most of the resolutions started to be broken, amen? And so as we begin this new year, let us resolve that we're going to begin our beginning by putting God at the beginning yeah. hmm? right. of every second. Put him at the beginning. Now, you've got to practice this. You're going to fail it a couple of times before you get it down pat. But put him at the beginning of every second. Put him at the beginning of every minute. Put him at the beginning of every day. Put him at the beginning of every week, of every month, and then put him at the beginning of everything. But first seek ye. Yeah. Huh? Uh, folks get confused. Well, I'm seeking the kingdom. No, that's not what he said. He said, but first seek ye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't say just jump over in the kingdom. He said, but first seek ye. In other words, he wanted us to put things in order. Yeah. Now, seek me first, and then all these things will be added unto you. Have you ever figured out why you don't have some things? Uh, yeah. You ever thought about that thing? Why is it all the why is it all my friends I have this and everybody got that? And why is it that I don't have the things that I want? First of all, the things that you you don't have things in order. He's an orderly God. Amen. And God is he, listen, He does not want to give you anything that will cause you to have a fatal accident. I'm so amazed at how a uh, folk have cars in North Carolina. Let me tell you something. They just have them tore all the way up till you can't even recognize what kind of car it is. Don't you know that God is not going to give you anything that's going to cause you to self-destruct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what God does. And so we'll find that in, uh, look at Matthew 6 and 33. Now, um, it was God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit that was present before there was a beginning. It was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost that said, let us, yeah, right. huh? let us make man. Yeah. Well, how are we going to make him? Let us make him in our image and in our likeness. Yeah. I stop by to tell you, my brothers and sisters, until you know how you are made, until you know what you are made of, amen, uh, you will never be able to experience the beginning with God. Yeah. First of all, you've got to know who you are. A uh, man today, thank you, Holy Ghost, let me leave out of here. There are many men, and I mean male men now. Let me make this plain for you. There are many men today that don't know that they are a trinity. They walk around thinking, I'm all that. Uh, well, let me tell you something. And you can take this to the bank. Take this with you. Amen? Any man 
that does not understand, first of all, that he was wonderfully made, that does not understand that he is a trinity, a man, is not a man. You got to know what you're made out of. You got to know what you're working with. Amen? And then you got to know how to use all of that. And so uh, that's how God made man. Amen? And, 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 and not only that, let us make and remain in God's image. Amen, somebody? Uh, God loved me enough. He loved you enough to make me in his own likeness and in his own image. Now, it was God the Son that suffered. Uh, because the first act. I got to get out of here. Because of the first Adam, amen, uh, the first man in the garden, because of uh, his sin, amen, because of his low-down ways, <laughs> I got to get out of here, because of all of the mess that, that, that the man had done, God had to send God the Son, and he sent God the Son, and, and, and then Gen uh, John picked it up and, and, and said the same thing Genesis said, in the beginning God, and what that tells me is that in the beginning. God the Father was there. And then in the beginning, God the Son was right there. And then in the beginning, God the Holy Ghost was right there. But man still was nothing until God stooped down on the ground and grabbed some dust and stepped some dust together and shaped it on man. He still was nobody.
persuade the God that you live, uh -huh. the way you lived in 2019. Right. And that will be your fault. Right. Because the Lord fixed everything. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Anybody in here ever messed it up? Yeah. Huh? Yes, yes. God can take your mess up. Yes. Huh? And turn it around. Yes. Yes. There's nothing that God cannot do. All you got to do is begin with it. I messed up. But I can begin all over again with God. That's the kind of God God is. Amen? And He loves me so much. And he loves me so much until He made a way for me to come back to Him. You don't have to stay estranged from God. You don't have to stay under the cloud of guilt and under the cloud of shame. Some of us been hanging around the wrong folks all 2019. Every time you open your eyes and see, somebody stick both of their fingers right in your eyes. <laughs> Amen. Listen, all I'm going to tell you about that is step back and blink and then look around. <laughs> Better yet, look up at God. Amen? Folks, something else. That's why it's so important that you begin your beginning with Him. Huh? I'm trying to help somebody get a new start. I'm trying to help somebody understand that you can start over. Amen? If you begin with Him. I want to tell you that without Him, in your life and in my life. I'm going to paint a picture for you. I'm going to leave you alone. Yeah. When you try to live this life and function in this life without God, y'all listening? Yeah. We stand before God naked yeah. with hell as the backdrop. That's something about it. All your fine clothes and shoes start life off without God, or you, you try to live this life without God, you stand before your naked with hell in the background. What kind of picture is that? You ever thought about how your portrait would look today? <laughs> if you don't have him in your life, if he's not an integral part of your life, if you've not begun with him, if you're not going all the way with him, you're standing before your naked, yeah, naked. with hell in the background. Hmm? That's how God looks at things in the spirit. What he wants to see when he looks at me and when he looks at you, what he wants to see is he wants to see the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. On us. Amen. The redeeming of blood. That's what he wants to see. So this year, 2020, don't leave the same way that you came. Leave understanding that you're going to begin your beginning with him. Yeah. Amen? Amen? The door of the church is open for the receptive members. Might be somebody here. You don't have a church home. Might be somebody here. You're looking for a church home. It might be somebody here. Never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You've just been going to church. Today is your day.